With us now to talk more about this, NBC News Justice and Intelligence Correspondent Ken Delanian outside the federal courthouse in Fort Pierce. Chuck Rosenberg, an MSNBC contributor and former U.S. attorney and senior FBI official. And Rebecca Royfe, former Manhattan assistant district attorney and a professor at the New York Law School. So, Ken, what's been happening so far at the hearing where you're out? Good morning, Jose. Our colleagues inside the courtroom tell us that arguments are underway before Judge Aileen Cannon. She is hearing two of Mr. Trump's seven motions to dismiss this case today. And she began by asking them to argue, uh, to make their arguments on their contention that the, the law at issue here, the Espionage Act, at issue for most of these counts, is unconstitutionally vague. That's their contention, that it didn't put Donald Trump on notice, that he wasn't allowed to take classified documents home, and so therefore this case should be thrown out. Uh, as our legal experts will tell you, the Espionage Act is a 1917 law that's been used for years to prosecute people who improperly handled classified material, who took it home, who disseminated it. Most recently, Jack Teixeira, uh, the uh, Massachusetts airman who pleaded guilty under that law to taking home classified documents and leaking them. So this, this challenge has been tried before and failed, but nonetheless, Mr. Trump is trying here again. The other argument he's going to make today is that the Presidential Records Act, that's a civil law governing the retention of presidential records, uh, should moot this prosecution, essentially, because what they argue is that all the documents that Mr. Trump deemed were personal and took home uh, were his to take, and that, therefore, they cannot be, he cannot be prosecuted for taking classified documents. Uh, Special Counsel Jack Smith said that both, both of these arguments are absurd, and in particular, the Presidential Record Act has nothing to do with the criminal laws governing classified information, that once Mr. Trump left office. He wasn't entitled to keep these documents, let alone in an insecure location at Mar-a-Lago, and let alone to allegedly obstruct justice and order uh, uh, compatriots to destroy evidence. Uh, so most legal experts think that these arguments don't have much of a chance, but Judge Aileen Cannon has devoted the entire day to hearing them, and uh, it's not clear whether she'll rule from the bench today, but we will await her ruling in these matters, Jose. Rebecca, what do you make of the motions at the center of today's hearing? I think the most important of his motions is the one that has to do with the Presidential Records Act. And I think that's true for three reasons. First of all, it's just so bold. The idea that a former president could take boxes and boxes of classified documents legally and just do whatever he wants with them is an extreme argument. And secondly, and relatedly, it also has a lot of political implications. For him, it allows him to claim that he did nothing wrong, which is his favorite thing always, rather than just say, this was a mistake or I didn't intend this. He says, I, what I did was absolutely right. And for the other, you know, for Democrats who are challenging his campaign, this is one of his claims in which he's suggesting that he is indeed above the law. And finally, I think it's important because there are implications for the immunity question, which the judge will decide later on, and that is whether she should stay the case. Because part of his claim here is that when he was president, he made these documents personal. And that would at least support a claim if the judge if the judge agrees with him that perhaps on some outer perimeter, this was part of his official acts and therefore he deserved immunity. Chuck, how unusual is it to have a hearing on these types of motions? Everything regarding this case is unusual, but this type of motion, how unusual is it? Yeah, so first off, Jose, you're right. Uh, everything about this case has been unusual, but let's talk about the more typical case, uh, a typical case. There's absolutely no reason why a judge, uh, a good, experienced, thoughtful federal judge anywhere in the country would have to hold a hearing, let alone a day-long hearing, uh, to consider two relatively easy motions. At least in my practice as a federal prosecutor in the Eastern District of Virginia, I imagine every judge sitting there would have disposed of these motions on the papers quickly and without a hearing. And by the way, if that sounds like a criticism of Judge Cannon, let me explain that a little bit. She's a relatively new federal judge. I imagine she hasn't had much experience with the Presidential Records Act or the Classified Information Procedures Act, and certainly uh, not with the claims by a former president that he's entitled to absolute immunity. We are all better in our 10th year or in our 20th year, Jose, than we are in our first year or in our second year regardless of what it is we do. And so I don't mean to suggest that Judge Cannon is uh, biased in favor of Mr. Trump. I do mean to suggest that I don't think she's very good at her job just yet, and that she has a lot to learn, and that a better judge would have handled this quickly and efficiently. And Chuck, so part of the 
Trump argument is is around the, the Presidential Records Act because, you know, he says he was allowed to designate White House records as personal. What exactly does that law say? And remembering that that law was really created post-Nixon, I mean, during the Nixon era. Right. So at the highest level, Jose, records that are generated uh, because you're the president or around your presidency or to support uh, your um, term as president do not belong to you. They belong to the American people. Uh, and the National Archives is the designated caretaker. But beyond that, and I think Rebecca is exactly right. You know, this is a, this is an important argument. I don't know that necessarily it's a winning argument for Mr. Trump. I think it's a losing argument. But at the very least, Jose, classified information can't be personal under any circumstance. If it's classified, it belongs to the United States government, regardless of the Presidential Records Act. The notion that that Mr. Trump can take classified information home, let alone store it in an insecure manner, and designate it as personal um, property is absurd. On its face, period, the end.